Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com and in today's video I'm going to show you something that I do very often in, in different renovations that I do and that is to adjust the height or cut off the height of an interior door. And as you can see here just as an example we've got the door just as it comes right out of the package. This is a what I always refer to as a pre-hung door. It's been pre-hinged. The jam pieces everything comes you know basically ready to assemble. Um, and then over to the far side, to, the, to your left, your right, I guess, what you'll see is what I actually want to end up with for the particular situation I have. It's not really ideal. It looks a little goofy, but sometimes, you know, you're, you're just limited to whatever uh, space you've kind of got to do. So one thing you need to obviously consider is uh, also what style of door you have. Obviously, if this was just a flat slab door, you know it would probably look better but it would also uh, make things a little bit easier but the main thing to consider when you're when you're using a door that's already pre-drilled as you can see the knob uh, height here so we're kind of limited I had to had to cut will have to cut some off the top and the bottom in order otherwise I'll just get this knob hole being way too low I mean it's already getting low as it is if I was to cut the full amount off I wanted to cut off the very bottom only the knob hole would have been like way down here I mean you well, you can see me reaching down to show you how low it is right now it's still at a decent height where you're not stooping too much the average person in order to reach it so um, yeah so basically these are hollow core doors so I'm gonna go through the whole process cutting the top and the bottom in this case off and uh, reinserting a solid piece of uh, material back into the ends uh, so that the door is still solid. So we're just gonna have to move a few things around here and uh, get set up and then we'll show you how I do it. Okay, so we've uh, just brought the door over to a solid surface to work on. And uh, the way I'm gonna demonstrate is by using your circular saw and basically a straight edge or a guide in order to cut the door off. Um, just because that's what most DIYers are going to have, you're going to have a circular saw. So you could use a table saw if you wanted to, that sort of thing, but uh, this is a little safer. So uh, obviously you're going to figure out exactly what you needed for a door height. Uh, I've already done that. I'm, I'm, there's no point in me telling you any actual numbers because uh, yours is more than likely going to be different. So, so once you decide, and, and I think I already mentioned that I'm cutting some off the top and bottom, so we're making a couple cuts here. So I, I've got this, I do this quite often, and sometimes I do it right on site. So I've just got this guide made up. In fact, I'll just take a second to kind of show you here. So the guide's made up to, to fit my saw. So this bottom piece just protects the door. So if it is a painted door or something, I'm not scratching it with the saw. The saw will actually run on that part of the guide and up against this, this edge to keep me straight, right? And if you can see underneath here, this edge is cut to the same exact measurement as my blade is away from that guide. So once I mark my door, I just simply line those marks up with the edge of this, clamp it in place, and I know it's gonna be right. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna mark my door here on the two edges. Obviously, I don't have any hardware or anything like that on the door. If you, for some reason, had the hinges on, you may have to actually take the hinge off because it would likely be in the way for the guide, depending on what you're using. You could just clamp down a piece of 2 by 4 as well. <coughs> so I've just marked or uh, lined this edge up with my mark. I'll do the same thing over here. And like I said, that's why I like this jig because I know that my blade, this is going to be the edge of my cut. So it's easy to line everything up. I've got my safety glasses in place. Um, now, if you were using a, you know, um, some kind of wood veneer door, what you might actually want to do because your, your skill saw, the blade is, is turning upwards and it could tear out the grain or rip it a little bit on this side. So if you're doing a, a veneer door, you might want to just take a utility knife and score right across there first a couple times. And that'll just cut that veneer so it doesn't tear. In this case, this is just an MDF panel door, Masonite, so. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so pretty easy. Here you can see the kind of the construction of the door, right? Uh, most of these are gonna have some kind of cardboard reinforcement on the inside. Uh, this one has MDF on the, on the two ends, or the two sides and the end. So we will have to, I'll, I'll turn the door here. Basically this is garbage now. I've tried in the past, uh, years ago, you know, trying to cut this down and reuse this piece. It's just not worth it. I just cut a new piece of MDF and uh, slip it in there. So I'll just remove this guide. Move a couple things out of the way and I'll spin the door so you can see the end. So here you can see the end of the door that is now exposed. So what will happen is once I get my MDF piece cut, I've got to measure obviously from here to here. I've already got it pre-cut for this distance, so that's easy enough for you to figure out and cut it. This bit of cardboard that's in the way, just push it back down for the thickness of whatever material you're using. Important to remember also, like our door is embossed here, it's got this raised panel type look. You don't want to cut too close to anything like that because on the inside here, there can be some protrusions that's not going to allow you to fill it in. So, you know, I always try to stay about an inch away. Plus it just looks a little better if you can that way. So I've got to cut this other end off in my case, because there's such an extreme uh, difference that I'm needing. So I knew what I need to cut off that end and I know what I need for a total height. So I'm going to mark that and basically just do the exact same thing again. So this is just a little bit of repetitive from what you just seen me do. And then we'll get into uh, reinserting our piece that we need in the end. <clears throat> like I said, this is something I do on lots of renovations. You're dealing with houses with low ceilings or uh, bulkheads that might have doorways underneath, that sort of thing. Okay, so I'll cut this off. I'm done with the guide so I'll just get it out of the way okay so uh, once you've cut that off usually there's some dust and stuff inside the door so I just make sure I stand it up and shake out some of that whatever's in there and I guess I'll turn it this way so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing so I'm just gonna like I said I've got this these pieces here it's just something I Every now and again, I get some scrap uh, three quarter or five eighths MDF. So I'll cut a few strips and I have them kicking around for exactly this project. Sorry, this type of project. And so I just, basically I really just need this to fit from there to there. So I'll just mark it, cut it on the miter saw. double check that it's gonna fit yep and to replace that piece in there all you need is two or three clamps the piece we just cut some glue and uh, I like to use a couple pieces of uh, scrap material just for clamping on and what I'll do is I try to put a big <clears throat> clean some dust out of here try to put a nice big bead of glue first of all inside here just right at the edge of the opening <clears throat> I try to keep it near the edge because when I slip this piece in there it kind of wants to push that glue in so if I get it in there too far uh, you're probably not getting a lot of contact and same idea here but on the leading edge of the top of this piece I want to get a bead of glue there and for the exact same principle because as I slide it in there it's going to kind of the top of the door is just going to kind of push it over and, and we're going to get a nice 
even distribution of glue. Okay, so I push it in and really it doesn't matter if this is in just a little bit past flush. It's sometimes hard to get it perfect. You can see I've got it nice in the middle and it's pushed in a little bit here. It's not really worth messing around with too much because nobody's gonna ever see it. I just don't like that piece projecting. So if anything, I like it set in just a little bit. So it's pretty good where it is there right now. These pieces I just uh, place on the top and bottom of the door so I'm getting better pressure across the panel of the door instead of just at the exact position of the clamp. So I'll put those three clamps on, squeeze them up, just simply wipe off that excess so it's not dripping everywhere. Like so. Okay, so basically I do that to both ends of the door. Now let it sit, uh, whatever your glue is recommended. I usually let it sit, you know, for the afternoon or overnight. Uh, when it's when I'm satisfied that it's the glue is dry, then I'll pull the clamps off the supports, and I'll just simply take a sanding block and uh, sand these corners just slightly, you know, so they just aren't a sharp corner. And uh, as always, uh, this door is obviously isn't painted, but if this door was already painted and I was just cutting it down, uh, you want to make sure you get these ends, these fresh cuts primed or painted uh, to keep your door from warping. So, so uh, I don't think it's I don't think I really need to show you the other end, but basically I'm going to do the exact same thing to fill it in. Uh, the next thing we're going to deal with is the uh, jams and the door stops. Okay, so as far as the frames go, like I said, these doors all come machined for the hinges, the, the knobs, that sort of thing. Uh, this particular brand, this hinge side is reversible. It doesn't matter which end's up or down. The hinges are spaced out to work out exactly the same. For the uh, knob side, because the the knob is always towards the bottom section of the door. No, it's not in the center of the door. This side is made reversible, so it could swing either for a left or right hand swing. So what I always do once I get the pieces all out of the package is I just stand these two jams up and, you know, imagine in my mind walking into this room and I, I look then and make sure, okay, yeah, I got the knob on the right side, hinges are swinging the right side. This is the way for this room that this jam would sit. Then I simply stand them together because those are the two faces I want. Stand them together and then I mark them right away while I'm still thinking of it. So I mark what room they're for and then I, I mark the top on each one just so I can't hopefully get it too screwed up if I set them down and get sidetracked or something. Okay so so I start out with that. Um, now in your package you're also going to have the, the the header piece and the stop which uh, you know we don't have to cut obviously because we're not changing the width and the side stops which we will cut to length so so that's everything that you're going to find in that package <clears throat> so moving on uh, really simply the best thing to do is especially in my case because i was cutting off some off the top and some off the bottom i want to cut th those exact same amounts off the top and off the bottom identical to what i did on the door otherwise your hinge and your and your uh, latch your your knob area are not going to line up again you're going to get this all in there and and the door just isn't going to fit into it okay so i've already pre-marked that out on mine so because i knew what i you know, had to cut off the top of the door. I've got to cut that exactly off of here. Same thing on the bottom. Now I'd simply just cut it on this saw. I, I don't think I need to show you how to use this miter saw. So uh, simply mark them both out, cut them on the saw. Okay, it's easy as that. So I'm going to set those to the side. <clears throat> so same thing on here. Now this obviously doesn't matter. You just need to cut the same total amount off that you cut off the door. So. I just simply have that marked from one end. The total amount, I think, was seven and five eighths or something like that. And same idea. I just simply cut it on the miter saw, and those are cut to length and ready to go. So that stuff's pretty easy. Like I said, I don't have to do anything with the, the header jam and the uh, header stop. Those are good to go. Um, that pretty much wraps things up. One thing I do want to touch on, though, if you're doing a bifold door, which is very common as well for me to do, here is a, a sample of a bifold section that I cut off. Doesn't matter if it's the top or the bottom, it's always going to have a hole in it because that's where uh, part of the hardware goes. 
So as you've seen me cut those other, the other door there, and I slid in that piece, glued it in, clamped it in. Once that's all dry, or even ahead of time of gluing it in, I wanna make sure I drill that hole back in that piece that I've added in the top of the door. Otherwise, I'm gonna get it on site and it's not gonna, you know, I'm gonna to have to drill it there or whatever. So I just simply make the take the measurements right off the existing piece that I uh, cut, cut off and uh, you should have no problems. And that's, uh, I think that's generally a 7 16 hole, but just measure it and, and be sure for your hardware. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that because uh, it won't be that, that uncommon to cut a bifold door as well. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can blabber on about on this topic. So uh, I think we've covered basically everything that was there. So uh, like I always say, uh, it's great if you guys like the video and you like what we're doing here, click the little thumbs up icon for us. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, come over to Patreon and have a scan around there. See if you might want to leave me a little tip. And uh, and uh, just in general, uh, make a comment on the video. I, I try to read all the comments. I don't always respond to all the comments, but uh, you know, make your comment there. If you do have a question though about this or anything else, go to the forum for sure. Go to the forum, post your question up there. You get a response every time to your question on the forum. So, so uh, anyways, uh, what's your project today? Was it cutting down a door? Hopefully that what I just showed you will help you out. Thanks again.